In this guide, I'll walk you through everything you need to know about installing and managing Minecraft mods, data packs, resource packs, shaders, and more in Minecraft Java Edition. Before modifying Minecraft, you'll need to know where to find your installation folder, which is where all your Minecraft files and settings are stored. If you are using vanilla Minecraft, open Minecraft, then press Installations. Press Open Installations folder. You will find similar buttons if you are using modded launchers. So what are mods? Mods add to or change features in Minecraft by directly modifying Minecraft's code. To run mods, you'll need a mod loader. Mod loaders are platforms that mods rely on to integrate with Minecraft. Here you have two main options, Forge and Fabric. Note that mods are usually built for one specific mod loader. So a mod designed for Forge won't work in Fabric unless the developer has made a version for both platforms. Forge is one of the oldest and is the most well-established mod loader. Because of how long it's been around, it has the largest library of mods. This mod loader is preferred for older Minecraft versions like 1.7.10, 1.12.2, and 1.16.5, since those versions have the most Forge compatible mods. It can be quite resource intensive, so a decent PC is recommended for large mod packs. The Optifine mod is commonly used with Forge to improve performance, but for versions 1.17 and above, Rubidium and Embedium are better alternatives. If you plan to use Forge for Minecraft 1.20.2 and above, you'll probably need to use NeoForge, a new version of Forge that many mods developers are switching to. However, some mods still support both Forge and NeoForge. Next, we have Fabric. Fabric is a lightweight mod loader known for improving the performance of Minecraft, especially when using the Sodium mod, making it a great choice for lower-end PCs. Fabric mods often update faster than Forge mods, allowing you to upgrade to the latest Minecraft versions more quickly. While its mod library started smaller, it has grown significantly, with even major mods like Biome So Plenty, Tinker's Construct, Ice and Fire, and Twilight Forest all having been ported to the Fabric mod loader, though some aren't officially supported. Like Forge, Fabric has another version, called Quilt but not many developers or users have adopted it. However, most Fabric mods are compatible with the Quilt mod loader. So, which mod loader should you choose? If you want access to a larger selection of mods and don't mind using older Minecraft versions, Forge is the best choice. However, if you prefer staying up to date with the newer Minecraft versions and need better performance, Fabric is the better option. To install the Forge mod loader, open Minecraft and go to Installations. Then click New Installations. Name the installation anything you want, then select the version of Minecraft you want to install Forge with. Now that the files for the version is downloaded, go to the Forge website and look for the version you want to install. Then click Installer under Download Recommended. Then click the Skip button, which starts the download. Once it's done, open the file. Make sure Install Client is selected. Then press OK. This will install the Forge mod loader, which we can now see when opening Minecraft. Now you can launch Minecraft with Forge installed. To install the Fabric mod loader, open the Fabric website and press the download button. Once it finishes, open the file. Select the Minecraft version you want, then click install. This will install the Fabric mod loader, which we can now see when we open Minecraft. However, to make it work fully, You'll also need to install the Fabric API, which after downloading it, you'll need to place in the mods folder. Now you can launch Minecraft with Fabric installed. There is however, an easier way to install mod loaders by using a modded launcher, which I will be discussing later. Whatever mod loader you use, when you download mods, make sure to select the right mod loader and version. Then, mods must be placed in the mods folder for it to work. Then, if you want to change some settings of a mod, you can do this by editing its config files under the config folder. Next, we have data packs. Data packs are similar to mods, but they don't directly modify Minecraft's code, which limits what they can add. They can tweak things like advancements, loot tables, crafting recipes, structures, and more. Unlike mods, data packs work in vanilla Minecraft without needing a mod loader. However, note that data packs weren't available in versions before 1.13. To install a data pack for a new world, download the data pack, then open Minecraft. Create a new world, go to the More tab, then click Data Packs. Drag the downloaded data pack into the Minecraft window. Transfer it to the right side to activate them, then click Done. Finally, click Create New World. 
the data pack should now be active in your world. For an existing world, open your installation folder, go to saves, then to your world folder, then to data packs. Place the data pack here. The data pack should now be active when you launch Minecraft. If you want a data pack to apply to all worlds automatically instead of adding them to each world manually, you can use the Global Packs mod. First, download the Global Packs mod, then place it in your mods folder. Now, to install data packs, go to your installation folder, then to Global Packs, then Require Data, and place your data pack there. However, I use the mod rent launcher, which creates a data packs folder and places downloaded data packs into it. To let Minecraft access this folder instead, go to the config folder, open this file, then set the required data packs to the data packs folder. Now you can just put data packs in the data packs folder and it will be applied to all your worlds. Next, we have resource packs. Resource packs alter textures, sounds, fonts, UI elements, and more. They also work in vanilla Minecraft and do not need a mod loader. To install a resource pack, first download the resource pack, then open Minecraft, then go to options, then to resource packs. Drag the resource pack into the Minecraft window, then transfer it from the left side to the right side, then press done. Take note that the pack at the top of the list takes priority. For example, if two resource packs changes your crosshair, the resource pack on top will be the only one that gets applied. Next, we have shaders. Shaders enhance Minecraft's visuals by adding things like dynamic lighting, realistic shadows, reflections, water waves, and more. To use shaders, Forge users need Optifine. On the other hand, Fabric users need Iris. For the shader itself, I use complementary shaders Unbound as my shader pack. To use shaders on Forge, download the Optifine mod and place it in your mods folder. Then, open Minecraft. Go to Options, Video Settings, Shaders, then click Shaders folder. This will open the Shader folder where you can now place the Shader pack. The shader should now appear in the list. Select the shader, then click Done. Your shader should now be working. The process for Fabric is very similar. Download the Iris mod and place it in your mods folder. Then open Minecraft. Go to Options, Video Settings, then click Shader Packs. Drag the shader pack into the Minecraft window, select the shader from the list, click Apply, then click Done. Your shader should now be working. So, where do we download these mods, data packs, resource packs, and shaders? The best sites to download these are from CurseForge and Modrinth. CurseForge hosts mods for many games, one of which is Minecraft. It has the largest library of Minecraft mods. However, the search functionality isn't the best and some find the site's ads quite intrusive. On the other hand, Modrinth offers a more user-friendly experience with efficient search functionality and a cleaner UI. Though its library is smaller, this is becoming less of a problem as more and more mods are being uploaded to Modrinth. However, to access the most mods, I recommend checking both platforms. If you don't want to go through all of this yourself, you can use the mod pack, which is a pre-packed collection of a mod loader, mods, data packs, resource packs, and shaders, usually with a certain theme like performance, zombies, or medieval. To install a mod pack, you'll usually need a launcher. A launcher simplifies the process of adding everything we've discussed in this video. It sets up a mod loader for you and lets you search for and install mods, resource packs, data packs, and shaders, putting them in the correct folders for you. So, which launcher should you use? If you want something simple, CurseForge and Modrinth have their own launchers, but they only support mods from their respective platforms. On the other hand, Prism Launcher and Ath Launcher support downloading mods from multiple sources, but all of its options and configurations might be overwhelming for new users. To install mod packs on these, you just need to search for the specific mod pack you want, click install, then the launcher sets up just about everything for you. Personally, I use Modern Launcher just because I find its UI easier to navigate. Additionally, I found that CurseForge, Prism, and Ath Launcher do not support installing data packs from within the launcher, requiring you to manually download and put the data packs in your data packs folder. On the other hand, you can download data packs from within Modern Launcher. If you want to know my personal setup, here it is. First, I use Modern Launcher. Then, I use Fabric as my mod loader. Then I download and install the Global Packs mod and configure it to recognize data packs from the data packs folder. 
With this setup, I can easily find and install mods, data packs, resource packs, and shaders through a simple search. When running a large mod pack, like my Cobblemon mod pack, I allocate at least 4GB of RAM because any lower might make your game lag. If you want a place to start, I've uploaded a base mod pack to Modernth with all the basic mods you'll usually want to have when starting out, which you can then build on with the mods you chose yourself. And so, that's my guide on installing mods, data packs, resource packs, and shaders. I hope this guide helps you get the most out of modded Minecraft. Thanks for watching.